hi and welcome back to my channel today i have two collage artist trading cards for you and i also want to share what i use for my collages and which papers i like what i have here is a newsprint paper i use these papers to lay them under bigger projects so i can paint over the edges and then i also use the leftover paper to clean my brushes and i also use it to put it onto my bigger jelly plate when I make the prints that I don't smear my fingers with the leftover paint. What I also love for collages are jelly prints and you will find a lot of jelly printing videos on my channel and I will also link up the whole playlist at the end of this video. These are some handmade jelly printed stickers. I also have I believe already two videos where I make those stickers. These are my palette papers. I use usually a normal piece of paper, sometimes more thicker, sometimes thinner quality to put my paints on. And this is a jelly printed tissue paper. This is also something I really like for collages, especially when I make them with gel medium. This is kind of a deli paper, also printed with the jelly plate and this is another palette paper where I put my paint on and when I have left over I just smear it around. Another cool thing for collages are old book pages and I also have some grid paper from an old paper pad which already looks uh, a bit vintage and this is my daughter's old paper pad from school. And I really like to use these, especially when they have some calculations on it. This paper pad was also the thing that inspired me to make a grid stamp for the Mixed Media Marks stamp set. I love to paint these grid papers and that's also an idea that I have for my daughter because when I picked it up it was laying around with a lot of black marks, watercolor marks, on top and she made them. I have no idea why or what she was doing but I really liked them and I asked her if I could have this piece of paper for collaging. I usually use black with the grit because I like that combination um, and I'm using black acrylic ink to paint it and I really like to make a pattern on top or circles and for example this is pretty easy method to create some interesting texture. I just use a flat brush and make some marks. I think it's always great to have some collage papers ready to go and then it's pretty easy and a quick thing to create uh, a piece and that's especially important when I have not so much time to prepare all my papers like I'm doing it here. You can use different kinds of brushes to get different kinds of marks, smaller ones, bigger ones. You could also use round brushes and make other uh, patterns. I'm using acrylic ink here instead of watercolor because watercolor is water soluble and in case I want to glue down the paper with gel medium and have to go over it then it's better to have a permanent paint on it but of course you could use watercolors and just be careful when you glue it down or just use it only with a glue stick like I'm doing it today and then you are good to go. And this is what I usually do with the palette papers. When there is leftover paint, I smear it around over the paper. And sometimes I also clean my stamps on those papers. What I also like to do is using such a messy paper and add some patterns with stamps. So I can just use these later in the 
collage project. Here I'm using the Harlequin stamp from the pencil marks number three. And also here I'm using permanent ink to make sure it's um, safe when I use any kind of collage medium. This jelly printed deli paper, it was, I believe, more a leftover paper I had on my side when I pr was printing, where I rolled the brayer um, and where I cleaned the stamps I was using for the prints. And here I'm just stamping the rainbow from the pencil mark stamp set, just in case I like that pattern for my collage and then I have it already finished and I don't have to pick out more supplies to create a final project. And here are some leftover pieces from jelly prints. I try to use those up first before I um, tear up another print because then I end up with a lot of paper scraps and I don't like hoarding paper scraps. I am someone who usually cleans them up and then I throw a lot of them away because I believe you never can use them up if you don't use them. So I always try to have not a lot of them laying around and usually smaller pieces I just throw away. I'm stamping them here with these leaf stamps from the craft collection number one. The papers I picked today don't have any special color scheme. I just picked the ones that were already started, like this one, and just the ones um, that were laying on top of my stack of papers. And um, when I'm creating the project, then I will finally make a decision which color combinations I want to choose. I had this jelly printed circle left over and I just cover it with this pencil marks stamp. I also have a lot of videos on my channel where I use a collage base for the project in my art journal or on artist trading cards or tags and I will try to link some of them up at the end of the video. And here I'm stamping on that old piece of the grid paper. I believe that was a paper pad I had when I was in school so it's Maybe not 30 years old, but almost. And of course you could also use different colors. I just like the contrast the black gives me also when I'm doing the project. If I don't have black marks on my papers, I usually stamp after the collage on top with some texture. And so I am just using black ink here. Another cool thing that are great for collages or especially for focal points on top of a project are um, leftover pieces from a ruined painting. And this was a watercolor painting that turned out so ugly that I just added black lines all over it and black marks with watercolors again and then I cut them into circles and add patterns with Posca paint pens. And I think these 
really nice and interesting and perfect for um, maybe a cover of a little journal or so. I want to paint this old book page and I'm not going to use black for this. I want to use gold paint because I also really like if I have some metallic accents on my pieces. And here I also just make some marks. This is nothing fancy, I just play around. What you also can do instead of painting the paper is using a stencil. Here I have a handmade stencil. I just used a cutting knife and I drew the squares and then cut them out. What I also want to create are some focal points or main images for projects and I'm using the botanical stamps from the pencil marks stamp sets and here you see that I use a leftover paper. This was a palette paper and I also cleaned some stamps on it and already used parts of it and I just stamped the whole piece of paper and then later I can cut the images out. I'm also using the Bumblebee stamp from the Inky Friends and also one of those butterflies. I also have a darker background paper here where stamping with black makes not so much sense I think. And I want to use this together with white embossing powder to create the main images. Before I can use the embossing ink I am cleaning the stamps off a bit because with the fresh black ink I will just make my embossing ink pad even more black. It's already a really dark grey. I'm adding the embossing powder right away before I make more prints or more stamp impressions on the paper.
because I can't see where I have already stamped and that makes it easy for me to find the free space on the paper. Again, I'm cleaning the stamp first because the ink pad is already so dark and I believe fresh ink wouldn't be good on the paper uh, on the ink pad and it also would give me maybe a little bit of a contamination of the of the stamp impression and I am not sure if it will mix maybe into the embossing powder. And I don't want to have a grayish white, I want to have a clean white. And here I'm also using the butterfly from the Inky Friends. I'm adding the embossing powder and then I will melt all the images with my heat tool and cut them out. And here I'm creating more collage papers with the mandala stamps and leftover scrap papers from jelly prints. I will also stamp the opposite side of this paper to have um, texture on both sides so I can use what I like. And this is a stamp from the Lace Doilies. And of course now it's time to create some artist trading cards with all those collage papers. Of course I will not use all of them, but some of them I have created today. I am using cardboard pieces as my base. I cut them to the right size of 3.5 inches by 2.5 inches and I have already covered them with a layer of gesso. And now I'm just arranging the papers on the cards and I stick them down with a glue stick. I prefer this method especially for these kinds of projects, artist trading cards or tags, um, because this is a quicker method and I can finish the piece right away and don't have to wait until anything is dry.
I'm curious to see if this branch would fit the cards but I don't end up using it because I feel it's not it lo doesn't look good I think instead of this branch I will pick one of the jelly printed stickers these are also very handy um, to create with I want to let you know that I will make kind of a summer break during August and part of September. I will um, only have one video per week then. I think it will be on Saturdays and my shop will also be closed from August 10th around to, I'm not sure about September 5th or 10th. I have to see um, how the plans are going and the store will have no shipping during this time. Now that I'm done with the collage and I have used those stickers, I decided to add a thin layer of gel on top. Because the stickers are, I believe, not safe to use just as they are, over time they will come off and this secures them. After I have applied the gel medium, I'm using this silicone tool from Catalyst and just go over the collage and it will remove the uh, gel medium and so I only have a 
small amount of it on the project and it's also everything flattened down so I don't have any bubbles. I let these cards dry and then I come back with the water soluble Neocolor crayons and I'm just adding some more color to the cards. I used a lot of water with the crayons, so I just used my heat tool and quickly dry the cards. And guess what I will do now? I add some splatters. I think I want to have um, white splatters to bring in more really white areas that increases the contrast and makes it more interesting. And as I haven't used the metallic paper where I made the metallic marks, I'm using some gold ink to create even more splatters. It's now time to add a focal point to the cards and as I told you I have already cut out all the images. I did this while I was watching TV in the evening and now I'm going through them and have a look which ones I like. I want to use this branch, but I feel the contrast against the background is not good enough, so I'm using a piece of old book paper with some gesso on it I have laying around, and I just stick it under the branch.
I'm gluing the pieces down with some wet glue that makes it easier um, than using the glue stick here. And in addition to the main image, I will also use a sentiment. I have cut out some words from the Mixer Sentiment stamp set and they are embossed on white, in white on black cardstock and I just cut those out and then I will stick them to the cards. And these are the finished artist trading cards. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you like the cards and maybe you are inspired to make a collage today. I hope we will see us next time and have a wonderful weekend. Bye!